everybody. Welcome back. Generalized autoregressive conditional heteroscedasticity. You guessed it, the Garch model, right? We're going to take a look uh, in Stata how to do a really powerful but really simple extension to that model uh, that's going to have some great applications to financial market data in particular. So what we're going to look at uh, here is the uh, an asymmetric Garch model, uh, whereby just like with every other Arch or Garch model, we're trying to predict variance, predict volatility, uh, in our case, in uh, an asset return variable. Uh, and the general scenario, right, of an Arch Garch model is that there's an auto regressive pattern, right? Past variance, past volatility will contribute to future volatility. Uh, so, what an asymmetric model is going to give us uh, is it'll allow for the very real possibility that volatility that stems from a downward movement in the market, right, unexpected negative returns, is going to have a different impact on future volatility than unexpected rises in return or volatility from a, a positive period in the market. Uh, and the financial theory that we're not going to get into here uh, suggests specifically that volatility coming from a down period, right, unexpected negative returns is going to contribute more to future variance than unexpected positive returns. Right? Uh, and that is in fact borne out uh, in the data more often than not. Okay, So let's take a look at what we've got here. We've generated uh, the daily return uh, of the NASDAQ uh, over this time period, about 1971 up through right now, which for me right now, uh, December 5th, 2018. Uh, and this little plot uh, we've got here uh, shows the level of the NASDAQ up above versus the returns down here. So typically in a Garch uh, scenario, right, we'd be looking for scenarios like this, right, of periods of clustered volatility, right, where once the variability in return right, starts to increase, it stays at a higher than average level. And then once volatility gets lower, it stays at that lower level. So it has that autoregressive uh, characteristic. Right? But what we're paying attention to now is what's happening in the level of the market when we get into these high volatility uh, clusters, these high volatility periods. Uh, and what we see, uh, the coinciding time periods here, that we had a steep precipitous fall in the NASDAQ, and that's coinciding with a period of high volatility. Likewise, the next period of high volatility coincides with a negative, an extended negative streak in the market. Uh, and note that right now volatility seems to be picking up again, and the market uh, has been having a, a couple rough days uh, in a row. So uh, again, just the visual evidence seems to indicate that that expected form of asymmetry. Okay. So now let's go ahead and jump back into Stata. Get rid of that. And here's where we have our, our data. So we've got the level of the NASDAQ, and we're going to base this on the returns. Um, and so what we're going to be doing is trying to predict the variance of the error term, the residual, coming out of an autoregressive moving average prediction equation for the return. Uh, it turns out in this case, uh, with the, the NASDAQ over this period, we do get some predictability in the level of the return. And we want to see if we get predictability as well in the uh, in that volatility. Uh, so we're going to be using the arch command and our variable here R N A S. That's the return on Nasdaq. Uh, and we're going to apply. This isn't the perfectly specified model, but it'll work for our example. Uh, we're going to do an A R one. Uh, we'll have the first moving average lag as well, uh, and then we'll have the arch term and the one lag of the garch term, and then we'll throw in this threshold term. Okay, so everything up to this point, until we get to that T A R C H, that tarch term, that's your standard uh, Arma one one garch one one model. So what is it that we're going to be adding here and how does it address our 
question of asymmetry? Well, it's actually really super basic. Uh, econometrics 101, right? So if this is our uh, kind of our standard variance equation, get my pin here, where our dependent variable here is going to be the error variance at time t, so our sigma squared, and then we have the arch term, right? essentially acting like a moving average, right? uh, and then the persistence term, the autoregressive, or the Garch term, well, we've added in this interaction term. It's basically, again, from Econometrics 101, a slope dummy term, right? where we're interacting this 0, 1 dummy variable that's controlling for the direction of the market. Right? So if this d t minus 1 is equal to 1, that is our quote-unquote good news indicator. That means the the unexpected movement in yesterday's return, the level of the return was positive. The residual was positive. When we're coming off a bad news period, quote unquote, a negative residual, then our error term will take on the value zero. So this is a, I can think of it as a, a good news dummy variable. And when we interact it here, that's going to give us you know, our two different slope terms, right? uh, depending on what the market did the day before. So when we do our kind of our marginal effect, right, the slope, if you will, of the arch term impacting the variance today, it's going to be adjusted by this parameter, by this lambda parameter, the coefficient on our slope dummy term. Right? So when our dt is equal to 1, the slope is adjusted by this lambda parameter. When it's equal to zero, when we're in that bad news period, there's no adjustment and we're at that baseline level. So what we expect to see is something like this, that the impact of coming off of a good news day, positive residual, should reduce that carryover effect, that the impact of volatility yesterday on today's variance is going to be smaller when the residual is positive. So we expect this lambda term to be negative, uh, coinciding with our expectations for the, the nature of that asymmetry. Okay? So let's, let's finally go back and, and actually do that estimation. So now we've got an idea of, of what to expect here. And here's our command. We've added in that tarch term. And I should warn you, uh, this might take a minute or so uh, to come to our estimates. Uh, so as you can see with our 12,000 or so observations, a uh, fairly uh, non-linear nature to the uh, likelihood function that's being optimized. I'm going to have to stall for a minute here while those estimates uh, come up. Uh, let me just mention, uh, you want to check back uh, in the uh, previous videos looking for uh, how to do the proper ARMA specification and the proper GARCH specification leading up to this. Uh, but at this point, Okay, stalling is over. We got the we got the results. Uh, up top here we have the AR and MA coefficients. So these are predicting the level of the return. The AR term significant uh, at one percent. The MA term not quite significant at ten percent. Uh, again, I'm not claiming that this is the proper specification. There's a little bit more work to be done there. Uh, but down below here, the predictability of the variance of the return volatility. Everything is significant. The arch term the Garch term, and look at that, the threshold term, that slope dummy term, is negative and significant. So what that tells us is the kind of the proportion of uh, market volatility that carries over to the next day right, is going to be this 0.15 value when returns are negative, when we're coming off a bad news day off of a good news day, there's still some carryover, but it's the sum of these two. It's that line flattening out, right? So it's about a value of 0.05, kind of the percentage uh, carryover effect, okay? So what should happen is your uh, conditional variance predictions, your forecasts coming out of this model that accounts for the asymmetry are going to be more accurate. Another way to think about it is if we had neglected to include this threshold interaction term, 
well, we'd have an omitted variable problem and our arch garch terms would be biased. So our predictions based on those coefficients, uh, again, would be much less accurate. So real easy to do in Stata. You've got to make sure you know the story behind it, right, to interpret that coefficient. Uh, so let me know if you have any questions, put them in the comments. And like I said, take a look at those previous videos to see kind of how we got to this point. Uh, but I will see you next time. Thank you once again.